Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Grain Feed brought to you by EverAg. This is your weekly news feed for all things grain and all things feed. Each week we'll bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an all-star team of analysts and advisors with the intention of helping grain and dairy farmers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, back in Chicago's winter wonderland after being on the road with Jake, who also joins us once again today as our Director of Feed Procurement. Welcome, Jake. Glad to see you uh, made it back to DFW safe and sound. Also returning once again from Atlanta, Illinois, we have our Director of Buyer Relations, Burl Prather. And joining us for her first appearance on the Grain Feed, but I'm sure you've seen her on the Grain Gab, one of our grain marketing advisors from the great state of Iowa, Kristen Steen. Team, how are we today? Doing great. A little bit chilly. Yeah, yeah. Good. You're down in Texas. It was so chilly in America. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, good deal. So let's timestamp the broadcast. It is Friday morning, um, not Thursday, because we were snowed in in Tennessee here this week, but... Friday morning, markets continue to keep us on our toes, um, Black Sea tensions or not, maybe negotiations, but keep swinging the wheat markets. You know, yield numbers coming out of South America continue to uh, give the bean market a little bit extra juice as we've seen a rally straight through 15 bucks. Crude oil continues to climb, lots going on. You know, Verl, we're watching the corn market and we've seen crude continue to rally. We've seen corn pull back, you know, uh, from its highs, at least over the last few days. We thought maybe ethanol prices would follow. You've been looking at ethanol margins for the past few weeks now. We noted on one of these broadcasts just a few weeks back how impressive margins had been. But you also suggested that maybe ethanol par- uh, margins had been peaking in the U.S., and indeed, they have eroded, you know, since we discussed this just a few weeks back. What is your take on this swing and how is it impacting markets? What are you seeing? Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, basically ethanol margins have retracted their way back into negative territory and, and in some cases break even as well, right? But um, one would one would typically think of a big rally in crude oil to be supportive of, of ethanol prices, right? But at this point, the growth in ethanol stocks in the U.S. has actually outweighed the support of uh, crude prices. Um, you know, just this week, ethanol stocks have jumped by about 5%, according to EIA data. And um, if you look towards the beginning of the year, we're up just over 20% actually on stocks. Uh, so there's certainly an argument there uh, that reduced production of ethanol is going to be required until we can get these uh, ethanol stock levels uh, back to, to normal, if you will. And unfortunately, um, you know, so far this year, we have not had enough of a bump in gasoline demand to facilitate that. Another important note to uh, take a look at, though, is that we are we are used to producing ethanol in a break-even or negative um, place, right, as far as margins go. So so the factor of margins being weaker alone does not necessarily mean that we're going to see massive declines in ethanol production. But at what point do we start to, to have trouble getting ethanol out of the way, right, to produce more? So that that's becoming a growing concern uh, for sure. Basis values, of course, have uh, have generally softened at the ethanol plants over the course of the last week. And, and part of that is uh, due to, you know, earlier in the week, we had a pretty healthy rally on corn. We saw more March corn work its way towards that 640 mark and then has since uh, fallen back. And producer sales have been uh, overall pretty healthy. Good deal, Verl. Yeah. And so that, that'll lead in, you know, to our discussions we've been having with Kristen, you, you noted, Verl, that the you know basis at the plants you know have weakened. We've seen futures nearby, right, for the March contract come off, um, at least off the highs over the last few days. But corn is still very strong. You know, Kristen, as as one of our grain advisors, you know, out west, out west of the uh, Mississippi River, I should say, um, how is this impacting your discussions with some of your farmers? 
we, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago, too, about how beans have had somewhat of a, a decent carry right in the nearby spreads where corn had been at an inverse, but we're starting to see that change as well. How is that impacting your discussions? Yeah, so definitely has taken a, a bit of a turn, right? A couple of weeks ago when I was talking with producers on their corn basis and what to do with their, you know, future sales or hedge to arrives that they had on it's, you know, these ethanol plants still seem to be at a hand to mouth. Uh, so let's just haul as, or let's just set basis as you get ready to haul versus that conversation has drastically changed into, okay, what do you think you can haul here in the next month or two? And let's go ahead and get that locked in because it, it does take a while to chew through all that. And, and plants are already starting to show that to us as well, that, that the slowdown nearby, you know, when you look at some of the local basis, uh, levels here in the Cedar Rapids, Iowa area, you're seeing nearby basis be at a, a four to seven cent discount compared to, you know, next month, this week to next month. So we're taking a heavy look at that. That's your cash carry. But what's also interesting to know is that, you know, when you have March hedge to arrives or future sales on, we were at an inverse from March to May, where now we're actually trading at about even and a little bit back and forth between that. So then when you factor what that what that basis is as well, there, there is a little bit of a cash carry for maybe somebody that can't logistically handle hauling everything right now. So that's that's mainly how those conversations have, have changed here in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then, Kristen, while we have you, if, obviously, most of your discussions at the moment are how to handle, you know, what old crop corn they still have in the bin. But it is February. We're starting to look at, you know, new crop decisions and, and planning decisions coming up here. Would you mind just giving us some of your feedback looking forward to December and maybe some of your targets and, and conversations you're having towards that delivery? Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, February price on, on crop insurance is getting established. That spring price is getting established as we speak. And we are, I mean, we're towards the top end of contract highs that we hit this, this week alone. So uh, it definitely yields a conversation there as well as we start to know what our insurance levels are and going into uh, what are you thinking for planting? And are, how are we managing that risk? And, and where does that go from there? That 580 number is one to be reckoned with when it comes to new crop corn, right? Can we blow through that? Yeah, obviously, we still have a lot of weather to get through. But um, by and large, when I've been talking to guys with their cost of productions and whatnot, we're certainly at levels that are that are really attractive compared to what we're used to this time of the year. I'd also just say that, you know, with March and May futures hitting back close to those contract highs, the producer has been ample, ample ready to sell on that side of things, which also leads to softening a basis, but plenty of plenty of supply of corn to these ethanol plants. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that 580 number that we hit, you know, just a couple of days ago, we've, we've come off a little bit since, but not that far away. And I think, like you said, we could easily uh, push back through that figure there. Um, Jake, we'll, we'll turn it to you. You and I are broken record protein tightness in the U.S., but it's a broken record for a reason. I mean, it, that is still the story, but we, we shift these conversations towards um, you know, the ethanol plants were maybe taking margins back down towards uh, net even and or negative. Will ethanol plants slow down production? Does that mean less DDGs are available? Um, are you still losing sleep at night over all of this? How, how are you handling these discussions? Yeah, so it's starting to, we're starting to see that materialize a little bit here. So kind of like Verl said earlier, maybe it's maybe it's not just strictly margins collapsing the way that they have so much as we've also seen ethanol stocks grow to some pretty strong levels here. And so, for example, we're hearing in Texas right now that there's some folks buying wet distillers that are being asked to decrease their consumption by a, a certain percentage just because the plant's not going to have the product or they'll plug with ethanol and then they won't have the product that way either. Um, you're going to start to see some downtime in some other areas as they try to slow down and do some repairs to avoid the same type of issues. So um, I think we're going to see the DDG and other distiller byproducts markets tighten up here. Well, we're seeing it in some spots and we're going to see it to continue to spread over other parts of the country. Uh, you'll see prices jump up a little bit 
fact of the matter is that we were producing record amounts of this stuff for, for a good while here, and they just had to get it out of the way. So we were getting a bit of a deal on it. And so now that market's kind of got to correct itself a bit, and, and we're going to feel the effect on price and a little bit on availability, I think, especially if plants slow their production the way they're Absolutely. So. And in relation to then soybean meal then, and we talked about how the corn market has pulled back slightly at the board. Soybean meal hasn't pulled back, but it has seemed to have at least stalled, you know, at these highs over the past few days, you know, reflecting the cash markets for meal. Are we still seeing extreme tightness in the U.S. for the meal side as well? And as we note this potential decline in DDG availability from tightness we're already seeing, is it still very important to you know lock in coverage on, on soybean meal for our dairy farmers? I think it's one of the most important things you can do from a, a feed perspective is to to get that stuff booked with your vendors and just ensure availability through the summer. I mean, we've been talking about this for a while, but the way that the Canadian canola crop performed this past summer, uh, we've got finite production in soybean meal and now if you start to take ddgs and wet distillers out of out of the picture a little bit too it just continues to get a little bit tighter as these things come together and we really don't see much relief from an availability standpoint until we get a crop coming off here late this summer and this fall in the u.s from a from a demand perspective ethanol is slowing down you're going to see ddgs slow down and you're going to see corn demand from those ethanol plants back off a little bit. Um, you might see a few cents come back into the basis and soften up a little bit and, and feed corn. Uh, you might also see a little bit of help across the feed market and, and spot prices just based on uh, softening spot rail values. So you're going to get a little bit of help there, but it, it, it's going to be very minor breaks uh, still still of the opinion that we need to get both of those covered up well thank you for that and thank you for watching the grain feed a big thanks to jake verl and Kristen for their contributions thanks to phil and the blimling crew for their charts and of course thanks to Paige for doing her best to make us look professional contact information is on the screen Please reach out with questions, comments, suggestions, or requests. We'd love to hear from you. And for those of you in California next week, let us know if you will be at the World Ag Expo because a handful of us ever aggers will be in attendance. It would be great to see you. In the meantime, that's all for today. Thank you and see you next week on The Grain Feed.